Now throughout this whole course I've tried to categorise as many different features in the landscape as I was able to do. So we've got water for example and buildings and trees and mountains and so on which we've put together in individual DVDs. But I've also been conscious that there's a whole load of smaller individual items, I've called them artefacts if you like, that don't necessarily conveniently fit into any of these categories of the DVDs. Here's a large cart that would be drawn by a horse. This is the start of a pram. Here's the watering can, the bike is fairly obvious. These boxes here perhaps are less obvious and these will form the basis of some of the vehicles. And this one here we'll use to create a typical British telephone box, the bright red telephone box. But when you look at it you can almost see on a grander scale that this could easily become a skyscraper. Now carts come in all shapes and sizes and of course carts have wheels and that's a big problem with a lot of people, how to draw convincing looking wheels. Now in a few minutes we'll have a, a quick look at a very simple way to draw wheels whether they're angled outwards like this or in line whether they're in a pram or a car or a steam locomotive or whatever. Painting and drawing wheels that look convincing and upright it's exactly the same principle as drawing and painting buildings where you need to get the perspective right but it's not at all difficult. All I've done here as you can see is drawn two lines coming from this notional vanishing point and I've drawn four vertical lines. That's the only thing you ought to remember is that those lines must be upright and vertical just like as if they were the side walls of buildings. Now to get the centre of the wheels all that we need to do is go from this vanishing point to a halfway mark which I've already measured here and if you likely draw a line like that. Right now that's giving you the centre of the wheels from top to bottom. To get the centre of the wheels from side to side you can measure if you want but remember we're painting wheels in watercolour fairly freely so as long as it looks around about halfway which is about there that's fine and that then gives you the centre of where your wheels will be. Don't have it coming to a point top or bottom, just have a curve like that. So it's the right height, that's a little bit uh, pointy, there we are, straighten it off. Again another value of doing this on a piece of uh, photocopier paper rather than your watercolour paper. But once you get used to doing this you'll soon get the hang of it and you'll be able to draw wheels quite accurately straight onto your watercolour paper. And there we are, we've got two wheels that are vertical and upright and I can ink those in or trace them down but I know that they're going to work. Now if I want a thicker wheel, like for example a tractor wheel, then all I need to do, this time I'm taking a straight line sideways, not the line that this may be on an angle but actually sideways horizontal if you like, top and bottom like that. Again I'm only doing it roughly and then I'm just following a parallel curve to this part of the wheel here. And you can see that gives me a blocky sort of wheel. I'm, I'm thinking tractor tyre at the moment so we're, we've got quite a big thick tyre and we've got the, shall we say, the centre of the tractor wheel there like that. The inside of the tyre or the left hand side of the tyre Let's just put a little angle like that and you can see how that works quite straightforward, quite simply to create a big heavy, in this case a big heavy tractor wheel. Now if you wanted to look at the wheels at a much more oblique angle, in other words you'd see much less of the wheels because you're much closer to them instead of almost side on as these are, then all you're going to do is to exactly the same as perspective with buildings you're going to have a steeper set of perspective lines I've measured the center line here it might not look it but trust me it's exactly halfway between there and there run that back to the vanishing point and I've drawn some vertical lines for the wheels just mark out a rough center point for the upright part of the uh, of the center the left to right part if you like the side to side side to side vertical okay we've now got our verticals and exactly the same thing applies except as you can see it's all a little bit more compressed 
but if you're doing a steam locomotive for example this is absolutely ideal where if you were standing close to a big locomotive and you were on the ground I mean, some of these wheels are six or seven feet in diameter so they rise way above you now if you need to show the other set of wheels on the far side of a wagon or a train or whatever it is again it's only like we've done here where we've drawn a thick tire except you're extending it to the full width of the vehicle you're drawing these horizontal lines in other words at 90 degrees to these vertical lines what normally happens with a vehicle is that, or even the locomotive, is that you won't see this part of the tyre or the wheel. It's only the bottom part that's usually visible underneath the chassis. But just by following these construction lines that you've created and doing this, you know this is going to be pretty well spot on.